Welcome to today's reading. We are going to begin the reading from the Ramayan, the story of Lord Rama by His Holiness Bhakti Vikas Swami. And this book has been dedicated by Maharaj to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. I'll show you the cover of the book. First of all, we'll start with the introduction and let's invoke the presence of the Lord first into our reading. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so let's begin with the introduction. Lord Ramchandra is not a mythical figure, an ordinary person or even a very great human being. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, the source, maintainer and controller of uncountable universes, both spiritual and mundane. As the super soul, he is present in every atom and in the heart of every living being. He knows everything past, present and future. Lord Rama is fully replete with six opulences, namely strength, fame, wealth, knowledge, beauty and renunciation. He is the reservoir of all auspicious qualities and is the ultimate goal of life for the yogis, renunciates and especially the devotees who ever delight in glorifying his inconceivable pastimes. Being an expansion of Krishna, the original form of the personality of Godhead, Lord Ramchandra eternally resides in his own planet in the spiritual world. He is accompanied there by his expansions and associates headed by his consort Sita, his brothers Lakshman, Bharat, Shatrughan and his celebrated servant Hanuman. Out of extraordinary compassion for the suffering, conditioned souls, the Lord occasionally descends into this material world and is thus known as an avatar, literally one who descends. The Lord explains this in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata Abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam surjamyaham Paritranaya sadhunam vinashayas chadushkritam dharm samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Whenever and wherever there is decline in religion, religious practice, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants as well as to re establish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. When the Supreme Lord comes to this world, he, do, he, so, he does so out of his own sweet will. Unlike the conditioned souls, he is not forced to take a Being far above the laws of karma and never even slightly under the jurisdiction, the Supreme Lord descends in his eternal Satchid Anand form. Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although I am the Lord of all living entities, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 verse 6 When the Supreme Lord descends, he shows his sublime nature by performing incomparable activities. When he came in his original form as Krishna, he killed many apparently unconquerable demons held the Govardhan hill on the tip of his little finger for seven days when he was apparently only a small child, made the sun rise again after it had said and took his friend Arjun on a journey beyond the edge of the universe. When he came as Vamandeva, he assumed the form of a dwarf yet with two footsteps 
crossed over the whole creation. Assuming a gigantic form as the transcendental boar Varaha, he picked up the earth planet which had fallen out of its orbit. As half man and half lion, Nrisimha, he stopped the atrocities of the demon king Hiranyakashipu by killing him. Although such extraordinary feats are doubted by men of puny intelligence, they are simply play for the Supreme Lord, who effortlessly creates, maintains and destroys millions of universes. Similarly, when the Supreme Lord appeared as Ramchandra, he performed the wonderful activity of slaying the tyrant Ravan, who was not to be killed by any other person, ostensibly assuming the form and personality of a human being. Lord Rama enjoyed many sweet pastimes with his dear devotees. These pastimes are inconceivable to the faithless, but are a source of transcendental joy for the theists. The story of Lord Rama has given pleasure and solace to theists for many thousands of years and continues to do so. Not, not so long ago, when the people of India were accustomed to discuss the transcendental activities of the Lord, every Hindu knew the pastimes of Lord Rama as well as the back, as the back of his hand. Among the three great epics famous in India, Ramayan, Mahabharat and Srimad Bhagavatam, the Ramayan was traditionally most popular due to its relative simplicity and cohesiveness of plot. The action, the drama and the pathos of Ramayana still place it among the world's most popular stories. Recently, with the spread of the Bhakti movement throughout the world, there has been a revival of interest within India also about the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. The Bhakti revival has been brought about largely due to the efforts of His Divine Grace, Abhay Charnavind Bhakti Vedan Swami Srila Prabhupada the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and the prime exponent of Bhakti in the modern age. Srila Prabhupada elaborately described the pastimes of Krishna in his writings and also wished that the pastimes of the Lord be widely broadcast. Regarding seeing your book on Lord Ramchandra, partly, so this is uh, some appreciation on Maharaja's books, book by uh, a doctor Dinanath and Mishra, he wrote to, he wrote in the appreciation for Prabhupada's books that uh, regarding seeing a book on Lord Ramchandra partly translated into English, I am very much eager to see it. I have to translate all the Puranas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, and many other theistic literatures left by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. I have a great desire to translate the Valmiki Ramayana. Because that is authorized, it appears that in the Western countries there is a great demand for real knowledge of Vedic literature. So you are a learned scholar both in English and Hindi and you can do this completely devoted to the service of Lord, Lord Ramchandra. Sorry, this was actually a letter from Srila Prabhupada to Dinanath and Mishra dated circa 26 July 1975. Ramayana was originally composed in Sanskrit by the great sage Valmiki and later many versions were composed in the vernacular languages of India. Unfortunately, many of the translators and commentators did not come in the pure devotional lineage of Valmiki and introduced many misconceptions and speculations about Lord Rama in their works. As a result, the pastime, the pristine position of Lord Rama as a supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead remains hidden to the readers of such texts. This present edition attempts to present the pastimes of Lord Rama in their true glory. Although it is a summary study, nothing of the main body of the story has been left out. It is hoped that in the not too distant future, a devotional scholar will present a verse by verse translation of the Valmiki Ramayan for the ever increasing number of devotees throughout the world. We pray that by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, this edition of Ramayan will shower the highest fortune on its readers by awakening in their hearts loving feelings for the lotus feet of Lord Ram. We beg the devotees to bless us with their mercy so that we may also attain such a benediction. 
Again, it must be emphasized that the reading of Ramayana will give greatest benefit if not if taken not simply as an exciting story, but with the understanding of the supra mundane and eternally supreme position of Lord Sri Ram. Those who read this with awareness will ultimately attain the greatest benediction of life, that of going back to Godhead. Janma karma chame divyam evam yo veti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mam eti so arjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body take his birth again in this material world but attains my eternal abode. Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 verse 9 Lord Sri Ram, the absolute personality of Godhead is attractive not only in his personal features but also in his transcendental activities. It is so because the Absolute is absolute by his name, fame, form, pastimes, entourage, paraphernalia, etc. The Lord descends on this material world out of his causeless mercy and displays his various transcendental pastimes as a human being so that human beings attracted towards him become able to go back to the Godhead. Men are naturally apt to hear histories and narrations of various personalities performing mundane activities without knowing that by such association one simply wastes valuable time and also becomes addicted to the three qualities of mundane nature. Instead of wasting time, one can get spiritual success by turning his attention to the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. By hearing the narration of the pastimes of the Lord, one contacts directly to the personality of Godhead and by hearing about the personality of Godhead from within, all accumulated sins of the mundane creature are cleared. Thus being cleared of all sins, the hearer gradually becomes liberated from the mundane association and becomes attracted to the features of the Lord. The whole idea is that simply by hearing out the Lord's pastimes, one can become one of the associates of the Lord. One can attain to the highest perfection of life simply by attentive hearing of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord from the right sources. This process of hearing in the association of the devotees is especially recommended in this age of quarrel, that is Kali. Adapted from Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 5th Chapter, 26 verse, purpled by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Prabhupada. So this introduction was by Bhaktivika Swami and now we will start the reading. So before we start the reading, Maharaj has given one note in his book. It says that this edition of Ramayana is based on the original text of, by Valmiki, the well-known descriptions of Lakshman Rekha of the ascetic woman Sashabri tasting fruit before offering it to Lord Rama and of Lord Rama worshipping Lord Shiva are not included because they do not appear in the Valmiki Ramayana. So here we begin from the Balkand. Once in a time long ago there lived a great sage named Valmiki who was never so happy as he was discussing the pastimes of the supreme personality of Godhead. One day while Valmiki was explaining the nectar of Krishna consciousness to a group of disciples, the great sage Sri Narad Muni who travels continuously throughout the spiritual and material world, worlds glorifying the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead appeared at Valmiki's hermitage. Upon seeing Sri Narad, Valmiki and his disciples immediately offered their respectful obeisances. Then, according to custom, they offered Sri Narad an elevated sitting place and washed his feet while sweetly inquiring about his welfare. After this, Valmiki inquired from Sri Narad, O best of all knowers of truth, please tell me who present now on earth is a reservoir of all opulences in full, who is the most accomplished, learned, powerful, noble-minded, truthful and grateful, who possesses flawless character and remains engaged looking after the genuine welfare of all living entities, who is there present that is without an equal, clever, the most beautiful and is never subject to the influence of anger or malice, yet 
instills fear within the hearts of even the great demigods when enraged who has the prowess to give protection to everyone within the three worlds to whom has the goddess of fortune bestowed all blessings o great sage please answer my inquiries fully the great sage narad who is able to know everything that happens within the three worlds replied o rishi there is an illustrious king by the name of ram who has appeared in the royal dynasty of ikshvaku as the son of maharaj dashrath he is the embodiment of all transcendental qualities and the possessor of all opulences ram perfectly controls his senses and is the master of unlimited potencies rama has mighty arms that extend down to his knees and his throat is marked with three auspicious lines like those on a canticle he has high and broad shoulders a wide chest a beautifully formed head a graceful forehead powerful jaws and deeply embedded collarbones his eyes are large he is majestically medium tall in stature and all his limbs are well formed and symmetrical his bodily complexion is dark greenish blue and has a great luster his intelligence is unfathomable his manners are grave and his speech is superb in tone and elo- eloquence lord rama has a supremely pure character and is a follower of the true religious principles he is full in self realization and is the upholder of varnashram dharma truly he is the support of the entire universe he is simultaneously the destroyer of all foes and the only shelter for those who are fully surrendered lord rama is the absolute knower of the vedas furthermore he is fully conversant with the use of all weapons he possesses unflinching determination and is a genius with unfailing memory indeed his learning is without bounds he is wise compassionate and heroic in battle he is loved by all creatures and is impartial towards friends and foes alike he is grave like an ocean in fortitude he is like the himalayan mountains in strength he is like lord vishnu in beauty he is like moon in forbearance he is like the earth and in anger he is like the fire that blazes forth at the time of universal destruction in wealth he is like kuvair and in devotion he is like dharma the lord of righteousness narada then briefly described to valmiki the past times of lord ramchandra he concluded by telling him that this same lord rama now rules over his subjects in a most righteous and exemplary manner he explained that during the reign of lord rama no one would suffer from any disease or mental disturbance everyone within lord rama's kingdom would be happy and prosperous never fearing thieves scarcity or hunger all the cities and villages would be filled with abundant grains fruits vegetables and milk products indeed the people would experience the same degree of piety and happiness that was exhibited during the satyug there would be no natural disturbances like floods earthquakes or famine and all the women would be chaste and never suffer widowhood lord ramchandra will rule over the earth in this way for 11000 years before returning to his supreme abode in the spiritual sky vaikuntha after satisfying the inquiry of valmiki muni which was for the benefit of the three worlds shri narad again took up his travels spreading the glories of the supreme lord the sage valmiki then journeyed to the banks of the river tamas tamas com- accompanied by his disciple bharadwaj at the river bank valmiki sat down to meditate upon the words of shri narad sitting within the forest valmiki happened to see a pair of cranes fully absorbed in sexual activity and singing in melodious jubilation at that time a malicious hunter of the nishad race appeared from his hiding place and released an arrow that pierced the body of the male bird causing it to fall shrieking to the ground then upon seeing her mate writhing upon the ground and smeared with blood the she bird cried out in terror having suddenly been cast down from the heights of sensual pleasure to the depths of despair when valmiki witnessed this tragic scene feelings of great compassion welled up within his breast considering the nishad's violent act to be extremely sinful 
Valmiki became angry and cursed the hunter, saying, O oh, killer of birds, as punishment for your heartless murder of an innocent creature engaged in gratifying his maid, may you never find peace of mind for endless years. So we shall continue our reading from here onwards tomorrow. So we have started the Balkand here in Ramayan. Story of Lord Rama. You can already feel that it has been um, narrated in a very simple yet very uh, gripping manner. That I, I felt that I could have read another seven, eight pages, but I can feel that the listener cannot be engaged for longer than this. So we will continue from here onwards tomorrow. I wish everyone here. A very happy Navratri because Navratri has also begun today and like we were saying before as well, Durga Devi is none other than the dear sister of Lord Krishna. So please ask for Bhakti from Durga Devi. Once we have Bhakti in life, Lord will make sure that we have the resources to continue with his Bhakti as well. And uh, I'm sure you will be doing your... Uh, worship of Durga Devi and her nine forms and also looking at the pastimes of Ramchandra, Lord Ramchandra and getting the younger ones in the family familiar with them. So with these words I'll take your leave. Thank you for joining. Hare Krishna, Jai Shri Ram and Jai Matadi. हरिओम तत्सत्